Good afternoon. Greetings to you, everybody, wherever you are. This day, today, in this class, we shall be considering human skeleton. Human skeleton. As you can see on the screen, skeleton is the is the in that part is the framework of bone. Is the framework of bone that gives us rigidity, shape, and support. These are every part in a, in a human skeleton. Here is the skull. This part is the mandible, lower jaw. This part is the maxillary, upper jaw. Here is the clavicle. This is the sternum, the humerus bone, upper arm, the cartilage disc. Here is the radius bone of the hand. This is the sacrum. Here is the scapula, or shoulder, the ribs, vertebral column, ilium, ilium and ulna. This ilium is for bone. Ilium, I-L-E-U-M, is for digestive system. This metacarpals, okay, for the hand, tibia and fibula. Now, we shall consider the definition of cartilage, of bones, of skeletal system. Skeletal system is the body of organism, okay, at first let me tell you that the combination of organs, or bones, that work together to give shape, makes up the skeletal system. And the body of an organism is supported by the framework on the inside or outside. This rigid framework of bones are called skeleton. Skeleton can therefore be defined as a rigid framework which gives support and shape to an organism. The skeleton of animals enables them to move from one place to another. The skeleton depending on the position of certain organisms in the evolutionary tree helps to determine that's the skeleton. You see, in the evolutionary trend, our skeletal build-up determines where the organism will be. Okay, so the, the, the skeleton depending on the position of certain organism in the evolutionary tree helps to determine the advancement and development of the organism. Each man is able to stand erect, than other organisms due to a sophisticated skeletal build-up. The reason why man stands erect compared to every other organism is because the skeletal build-up is very strong, is highly sophisticated. That is the term. Living organisms, including plants and animals, need tissue to enable them to carry out life processes, such as movement, respiration, reproduction. For example, without various bones and tissues, vertebrates will not be able to stand, respire, move, and carry out all life processes. In fact, amoeba is referred as a skeletal organism because it is it does not have bone. That's why we call it shapeless. If it had that bone, it wouldn't have been shapeless. Okay. Skeletal skeleton are bony structures that gives animals shape, support, rigidity, and protect delicate organs of the body. Absolutely, we have total totally we have 206 bones in the body. Now Forms and components of skeleton. The three forms of skeleton are also called skeletal material, and they are cartilage, bones, and corticles. Cartilage, bones, and corticles. Those are the three skeletal material. We first take corticles. Corticle is composed of a protein called chitin. Chitin is the protein found in corticles. Corticle is a skeletal material. It also has a thin waterproof layer of wax. What that means is that organisms that have this uh, skeletal material cannot be sold or get wet in water. That's why attributes, insects, mosquitoes and all those can fly when it is raining because their skeletal layer material is cotton, which is what? Waterproof. It washes off the water. It doesn't allow you to get them soaked or drenched. Chitin is a non-living substance. Hence, animals with this type of skeletal material, they can only go by molting or emphasis. In this process, the organism shares off its whole skeleton put on a new one. So, for an organism to grow, it must put on the whole skeleton. It has to do that. Okay? So, the, for any organism that has particles, they have to grow by molting or emphasis. And molting or emphasis is the process by which an organism put on the whole skeleton and put on a new one. Cortical is an exoskeleton. It is located externally in the body. Externally, it is located in the body. Okay? Examples of organisms with this type of skeletal material are atropos majorly. And among animal kingdom, atropos is the largest of the animal kingdom. Insecta is the largest of the atropos. Okay, so we have billions and millions of insects 
or actual or that belongs to the actual bones. Examples of organisms which have bones are mainly vertebrates, e.g., mammals, lizards, snakes, bony fish, toads, etc. A bone usually consists of hard outer layer, and the hard outer layer is for sharks, and a spongy or hollow cavity filled with bone marrow. Bone is a tissue and a major component of the skeletal skele uh, of the vertebral skeleton. It's a tissue. There is a cell in the bone, and the name of the cell is called osteocytes. Osteocyte. That's the name of the cell in the bone. Okay. The bone cannot be replaced by a cartilage. But cartilage can be replaced by the bone. Bone is always hard compared to cartilage. Okay, bone are made up of cells called, like I said, not only osteocytes, calcium phosphate, calcium carbonate. This mineral, the minerals are the non-living components, and they made up, they are made up of what two thirds of the mass of bone. As a result, the bone is stronger and more rigid tissue than cartilage. So the, the bone has both cell and both living cell. Both living and non-living component. The non-living component are the minerals. That thing you suck in the bone is called the bone marrow. It's made up of uh, minerals, calcium phosphate and calcium carbonate. Okay, now cartilage is a, it's also a tissue found in the skeleton of complex vertebrates. It's made up of living cells called the chondroblasts. In the bone, we have an osteocyte. In the cartilage, we have the chondroblasts, carbohydrates and protein fiber. It is a tough and flexible tissue that has great tensile strength. Cartilage that has shock absorber. Cartilage has acts as what? Shock absorbers. Cautioning the effects of bones against uh, bones during movement. You know, if not for the effect of cartilage that is between each bone, there would have been the effect of friction, which is always wear and tear. Cartilages, cartilaginous fishes like sharks, rays, mammals, generally are examples of organisms that possess what? They possess cartilage. Now, types of cartilage. Okay, we have several types of cartilage. Cartilage is found in the epiglottis and pinnae. Hyaline. So, types of cartilage are elastic cartilage, hyaline cartilage, and fibro cartilage. Elastic cartilage is found in the epiglottis and pinnae, which is why your ear can be twisted and it can return back to its normal state point because it is what? Elastic. It's made up of an elastic cartilage. Hyaline cartilage is found in two places, three different places. Number one, the protruding part of the nose, we support it. And that's the reason why the nose, when you receive a punch on the nose, it can break, right? What you have here is cartilage, not bone. Okay, trachea and bronchi, which keep them open. Another place where you can find hyaline cartilage. And the last part is the open surface of what? Movable joints. We call movable joints. That the surface of all movable joints will have an hyaline cartilage. Fibro cartilage is tougher than hyaline cartilage. So, fibro is the toughest, hyaline is tougher, while elastic is, uh, you know. It is found in the disc, that's fibro cartilage, is found in the disc between small bones. So, vertebral of the vertebral cord, that's where you find, that's where you find. Now, what are the importance of skeletons? For movement, if not for skeletons, we wouldn't have been able to achieve movement. We are able to move around because we have skeletons, we have bones that support the muscles and all those, so we could move our body. Okay, protection. The cartilage, the bones helps to protect delicate organs. In the, the brain, as the, uh, the brain, the skull is protected by cranium or brain box. Okay, uh, the, the delicate organ, lungs, heart, all those, they are protected by the thoracic cavity. And please be reminded that there are some, there are cavities in the body. We have thoracic cavity, we have abdominal cavity, we have anal cavity, we have oral cavity. We have glenoid cavity, we have sigmoid cavity. All these are the six cavities we have in the body. Oral for the mouth, anal for the anus, okay, thorax for the uh, the thoracic vertebra and the rib cage. They form a cavity, we call it the thorax cavity. So it serves, it, it serves for protection. Storage of minerals. Minerals are stored in the bone. Calcium, phosphorus, for example. Respiration. Uh, the thoracic cavity that is formed helps to enhance respiration because that is where we have the hearts and the lungs. Okay, so they protect it and in a way they support its shape. We couldn't have, we would have been shapeless like an amoeba if we do not have what skeleton. Attachment of muscles. You know, bones are attached to muscles. Okay, number uh, the next one, it helps in the manufacture of blood cells in the marrow of long bones. Blood cells are manufactured. For example, this is the cortical and the transverse section of bone. 
Yeah, translation of body. We have osteocyte and fully osteon avasi. This is the cortical. We have old epicortical, exocortical, endocortical, new cortical, and epidermis. Is that okay? Now, this is simple and cartilage. We have the matrix, the chondrocyte of the podocast, and we have the lacuna. Okay, now I can show you this before. Now, let's move on to types of skeleton. The three types of skeleton we have are endoskeleton, exoskeleton, and hydroskeleton, hydrostatic fluid. Endoskeleton is a type of skeleton that is found inside.